like the new God or the old God? The God of the Old Testament or the God of the New Testament? You know, sometimes you hear this kind of talk and maybe you think there's something to it. After all, we do kind of hear stories in the Old Testament about God being fire and smoke on a mountain and lightning and him swallowing up people with the earth. Seems like there are lots of cases in the Old Testament where God gets mad. And in the New Testament, yeah, there's certainly a desire to see Jesus as a loving, humble shepherd who comes to lovingly place a sheep on his shoulders. And so there could be the tendency to think that, well, the God of the Old Testament was mean, but then, thank God, Jesus came, and now everything's nice. Well, you could say that, but you'd be a heretic. Uh, particularly the heresy of Marcionism. Marcion was one who basically said, let's throw out the Old Testament because Jesus is here. This is just not how God works. God spent thousands of years preparing his people in the Old Covenant for the new and lasting covenant that Jesus would make. It doesn't make sense that God would teach his people through the means of the law for all those years and then just throw it out. In fact, Jesus says the same in the New Testament. Think not that I have come to overthrow the law. Rather, I've come to fulfill it. We continue today to talk about the O Antiphons, the beautiful verses that go before Mary's Magnificat in Vespers of these last seven days before Christmas Eve. Today we have the title of the Messiah, O Adonai. Now you might be thinking, O Adonai, what is that? Well, in fact, when I went to translate this O Antiphon, I just had to leave it as O Adonai. I'll see in a minute why that is. Hear, hear the whole Antiphon now. O Adonai, and leader of the house of Israel, who appeared to Moses in the fire of a burning bush, and on Sinai gave him the law, come to redeem us with an outstretched arm. Who is this Adonai? Well, if you remember the story of Moses and the burning bush that the O Antiphon refers to here, God appears in a bush, and Moses asks God to reveal himself, particularly his name. If I go to Pharaoh and say, who sent me? What name should I give him? And God reveals his name. We don't really know how it was pronounced, though. In Hebrew, there are no vowels written, just consonants. And so we know that there are four letters for God's name, basically Y-H-W-H. Uh, typically, in, in English, we would say that that is pronounced probably Yahweh. However, uh, remember that commandment that Moses gets that thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Well, the Jews created what we would call today a fence around the law, meaning that if you want to avoid taking God's name in vain, like cursing or swearing by Yahweh, well, just don't use his name at all. And so instead of saying Yahweh, the name given to Moses, they would substitute the word Lord. And the word for Lord in Hebrew is Adonai. A little bit of an aside, if you want to remember not to say Yahweh when you see Y-H-W-H, -H. Uh, what they did when they wrote the vowels in underneath is instead of writing vowels for Yahweh, they wrote the vowels for Adonai. So whenever you would see God's name in the Hebrew scriptures, you would see the vowels underneath for Adonai and know not to say Yahweh. Well, guess what? If you don't know that that's what's going on and you just take the vowels for Adonai, and put them in the YHWH, guess what you get? Jehovah. Now, you might have heard of Jehovah's Witnesses and a lot of people using the name Jehovah. Yeah, not only is there ain't no God like Jehovah, there ain't no such name for God like Jehovah either. Because however YHWH was pronounced, we know it definitely was not Jehovah. Because the whole reason of putting the vowels for Adonai underneath is that you remember not to say Yahweh. Uh, so it couldn't have been Jehovah. Anyway, the point here with this antiphon is to remind us that the God that appeared to Moses in the bush, who gave his name, Yahweh, Adonai, it's the same God that comes in Bethlehem, the same God that is born of Mary, the same God who does all those nice, warm, fuzzy things in the New Testament, the same God who also makes a whip out of cords and drives people out of the temple and curses the scribes and Pharisees. It's all the same God. And just like any good parent, sometimes parents get mad and they have to discipline and sometimes they're loving and gentle and sweet and our heavenly father is all of that so yes he is the adonai the leader of the house of israel or ruler of the house of israel even who appeared to moses in the fire of a burning bush on sinai and gave him the law but we also pray that the same adonai would come to redeem us 
with an outstretched arm. That outstretched arm means, yeah, that powerful God? Let him use that power now to come and not vanquish us, but vanquish sin. Come and wipe out the enemy of Satan in the world. Come with your outstretched, powerful right hand, not in vengeance against your beloved people, but to free them. This is the great news then, that that Adonai, God who revealed his name in the burning bush to Moses, reveals himself to us too. And at Christmas, he reveals himself as a little baby, but a little baby with a really strong right arm.